Hello YouTube, it's Glock again. This time I'm bringing you a much longer and more detailed video. A beginner's guide to military simulators, hell let loose, postscriptum, and squad. We will be going over your main objectives, the different types of spawn points, and going into detail of each role and their effective kits. This is going to be a really long one, so get yourself buckled in and ready. Right now, in current milsim type games, you are introduced to a series of attack and defend objectives at once in one game, effectively creating an active front line or war of attrition. Each of the games have different goals. Squad and postscriptum are very similar. You're going to end up trying to control the majority of the map in order to cause bleed in the game mode AAS. In Invasion, it's a little different. It's a series, um, there's one side attacking, the other side's defending. Um, if the attacking side runs out of tickets slash manpower, they lose. If they take all the objectives, they win. Um, or whichever team runs out of tickets first loses also. In Invasion, you can lose the ticket even if you're defending. Um, Hell Let Loose have different ways to win, and there is only one game mode. Um, you try to drain manpower, or you can push the enemy back to the base and capture two out of the three zones around their base to win. Seems simple enough, right? Well, not really. There are many small things that can contribute to a win condition. Things that might not come naturally to people new to these types of games. For example, in the arcade game Battlefield, you spawn on old points you have captured in order to push new points. In military simulators, you have to place your own spawn points, and if they are destroyed by opponents, well then you're, you're SOL. And now we're going to start talking about spawn points that you can place. In these three games specifically, there are two different types of spawn points. There are squad slash platoon spawns, and there are team spawns. Squad or platoon spawns are placed by not being close to enemies, um, but they are very easily breakable. They can usually be broken merely by stepping on them. Um, these are especially useful for attacking a point. You should do something like use a vehicle to get to a favorable position and place one of these, or you could spawn on a team spawn and push somewhere closer to your point of attack. Um, another great use of squad or platoon spawn points is a backup on a defense point in case your team spawn gets overrun. Team spawn points main uses are defense. As I've talked about in a previous video, it's good to have one in an urban or an enclosed area and have a defensive pis position somewhere in an advantageous spot nearby. However, let's talk about how they can be used offensively. You'll often see squads or platoons funneling out of defensive spawn points towards objectives. This will effectively create front lines slash no man's lands or as I like to call, meat grinders, especially in urban environments. Now smart squad leaders will use momentum, timing, or a flank to get an offensive spawn point close to an enemy, enemy point. This will allow for your team to go 50-50 on attack and defense. Um, for example, squads 1, 2, and 3, to, one, two and three defending point A, and squads 4, 5, and 6 defending or attacking point B, and then funnel into an enemy defensive position whilst vehicles or artillery fire is pounding and softening the defensive position. You will usually never win the fight of attrition by continually funneling into the meat grinder. That's why offensive team spawn, spawn points can be a seriously effective way of breaking through enemy lines. Another great thing about team spawns is they are usually much harder to break through, requiring teamwork or at least multiple allies to eliminate. Alright, now we're going to move on to infantry roles and their effectiveness. Each game out of the respective three main military sims each have their own effective roles you could choose in your squad slash platoon. However, they do all have similar roles to offer. You usually have your bare bones riflemen, your medics, your anti tank, your machine gunners, your grenadiers, your marksmen slash recon, and your squad leaders. Now, I know that there are many more and many much more detailed roles between all the military sims, but these are the main roles you will be using. I've talked about these slightly in a previous video, but we're going to go into a 
bit more detail about each and what they specialize in. This should help you figure out what you enjoy using. Alright, let's start with the Rifleman. This is your bare bones kit. You'll have your standard issue rifle for your faction, grenades, smoke grenades, and possibly some sort of buildable item you carry on hand. For example, in Hell Let Loose, your rifle may carry an ammo box where you can resupply from. And in Squad, your rifle may carry razor wire that can be built up by shoveling. This is a great role to choose if you are new to the game and you're ch and just wanting to get used to the combat, pacing, maps, and key bindings. It is also a great role to choose if you are a particularly good twitch shooter as your main goal will be racking up kills. However, I say this with a bit of caution. Don't spawn in and run a mile away from your squad. You'll still want to be close to your group and working together as they will provide valuable enemy movement intelligence that you are supposed to capitalize on. Also, as a rifleman, your leader may ask you to do tasks that other roles are too important to sacrifice. For example, they may ask you to run supplies in a truck, man a mortar, or even to switch your role to something more useful for the situation. So try to remember that even though you're just a simple rifleman, you're not immune to team play. Next we'll go on to the Medic. Medic is the backbone of your team's manpower. Every time you respawn on a, pump, on a spawn point, it'll cost your team manpower or tickets. The Medic's first and foremost job is to keep everyone up on their feet and not using the team's resources. Racking up kills is only a plus as a Medic. You will use cover, smokes, and a bit of creativity, creativity and luck to keep your squaddies alive. This role is a great one to choose if you are interested in learning how to interact with the team and move effectively with your squad or platoon. Someone with background in survival type games would do great as a medic because a medic's top priority, besides reviving people, is being able to stay alive. This means you can use visual and audio skills along with having a strong attention span to what you are doing. Being a medic may mean crawling along the ground for 5 minutes at a time just to revive your squad leader so your team can place a respawn point. Being able to track and avoid enemy gunfire is going to be something that you're going to have to get used to if you can't already do that. Medics do have a simple kit, however it is different in between the games. In squad and post scriptum you'll have a standard issue rifle without optics, bandages, and a med kit. In Hell at Loose, your kit's stripped down even worse. You only carry your faction's standard side sidearm, bandages, and morphine. Medics are useful in both attacking and defending points. Now let's move on to anti-tank. Anti-tank's going to be the simplest role for me to explain. You'll move with your squad and you'll eliminate enemy vehicle threats. The most important part of this role is going to be coordinating with the marksman and squad leader to track the movement of enemy vehicles. You want to effectively flank the vehicle and score a direct hit. Um, trying to face the vehicle head on from a position that it already knows um, you're coming from isn't going to work. It's just going to hammer you and get a one or two shot kill on you. If done correctly, you can seriously cripple the vehicle with just a single hit, even as a light anti-tank. Something you'll have to learn for each game, though, is the tra trajectory of each AT launcher. Each faction will also have a different one in the game you're playing. You will also have to learn the armor system of vehicles and where and when to shoot and not to shoot for each vehicle. What this means is try not to get a reflection shot by shooting the wrong part of the armor. Anti-tank can effectively push a vehicle or simply wait on a defense point for vehicles to make threats which is what makes it a versatile role for attacking and defending. Alright guys, it's MG time. MGs carry the standard belt-fed machine gun of your faction, fixed with a bipod and possibly a scope or a sight. Machine gunners can be a versatile role if you know what you're doing. Just like the AT, you will need to coordinate with your squad leader and the marksman slash recon and analyze troop movement. You will have to predict troop movement and effectively place yourself in a defensive position to suppress the movement. While MGs are mainly a defensive element, they, they can be used very effectively in attacks if the MG has a good MG gunner has a good intuition and game sense. 
For example, if you predict any movement during your squad's advance on a position, you can effectively place yourself in an advantageous spot to suppress the enemy and allow your teammates to gain the upper hand and eliminate the threat. Also, if you are ambushed by a group of enemies, effectively getting your weapon down quickly and suppressing the ambush can nullify the effect it has on your momentum. This is a very, very effective class to play, and I definitely suggest giving it a shot as it can be quite the rush to pin, enemy, pin an enemy squad down. Also, the MG42 and the World War II Milsims are the most, is the most intimidating weapon to take fire from in any of the games. Grenadier is what it is called. A guy who carries extra grenades or a great grenade launcher to deploy grenades in areas you otherwise could not reach, as well as your faction standard rifle, it's usually stripped. They also usually carry an extra handful of smoke grenades, which is why this kit is primarily only an offensive role. Your role is simple, to soften up enemy defenses, destroying sand sandbags, etc, etc, and provide smoke cover for your advancing group. This can be a very fun kit to use and definitely worth switching to if you know you're going to be on the offensive. Alright, now we're going to talk about one of the most popular kits, your marksman slash scout slash recon. The marksman kit isn't going to be a killing machine and it works better in a defensive position. You'll spend time in secluded areas away from the main infantry traffic or front lines with a scope or binoculars and scope out enemy movement. You should be able to see enemies trying to flank around the main traffic and be able to track vehicle movement. You should also be coordinating directly with your squad leader MG and your AT. An, an effective marksman and MG can contain an entire enemy squad or two in a suppressed position unable to advance. You could still be an effective marksman in an attacking position, especially if you work with the MG and Grenadier, and keep the enemies off of high points and good defensive positions. You can set a firing squad of your you can set a firing squad of your MG, marksman, and some scoped riflemen above a capture point or defense point to provide covering fire for the main infantry traffic to really really hinder the defensives. Combine that with mortar fire and you should have a clear path right up to the enemy's spawn bunker, garrison, or hab. All in all, a marksman is a more of a defensive role but it can put a big dent in the enemy if used correctly in an offensive push. Alright, we're at our final and most important thing to talk about. Squad leader. I'm not going to go into too too much detail about this um, because in a future video I'm going to go into much greater detail about squad leading and effectively make a beginner's guide for it. So be on the lookout for that. Squad leading is easily the most effective part of every squad or platoon. The squad lead kit should not be chosen unless you have some experience with the game. However, I would recommend at least around 30 to 50 hours before trying. But once you've got the basics down, and you effectively know how to play the game, I would recommend giving it a shot. You may end up enjoying it more than you think. If you are effective at communicating and organizing, you will have a great time as a, as a squad lead. You, you predict enemy movements and react. You use markers and knowledge to organize your squaddies into effective positions or pushes. Don't expect it to go perfectly your first time around. Um, my best tip for you now is just to give it a shot and try to find some videos online. If you end up liking it, you end up liking it. So through the last 14 minutes, we have went over how the game modes are played, the different spawn points and how to use them, and the main kits and their roles. This is the conclusion of the beginner's guide. If you have any specific video requests, questions, or comments, please comment down below. I read every comment comment and I respond to most. I am very interested in hearing viewer feedback, so please comment away. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. All the background video was recorded during live streams on my Twitch channel. Be sure to come by and check it out if you are interested in that. We always have a great time during the live streams and we're building an amazing community. To keep updated with the YouTube and Twitch channels, make sure you follow me on Twitter. I do follow back. There are also many many more hints and tips and beginners guide beginner guides videos coming so be sure to be on the lookout for those but for now Glock is out